are thirsty, come to the well and drink from waters flowing. You who are hungry, come to the bread and eat of his holiness. You who are tired, find rest. You who are weak, find strength. You who are thirsty, come to the well and drink. Good morning and welcome to Unity Church of Oklahoma. My name is Robert Bright and I'm the pastor and it is my joy and my honor to welcome you here on this Sunday morning to celebrate God's love. As Jody was just singing, Everyone who is thirsty, everyone who is hungry, everyone who is tired is welcome right here. Everyone who is celebrating and experiencing joy is welcome right here. This is our moment, our time to commune with God, and we are so thankful that we have been given this. We open in prayer. Mother, Father, God, we give thanks and praise for the life that you've given us. We are grateful for this experience that we can open our hearts, our minds, our way to you and to be filled with your blessings, to be filled with your love. And we claim that right here and right now in the name and in the nature of Jesus Christ. Amen. You who are thirsty, come to the well and drink from waters flowing. You who are hungry, come to the bread and eat of his holiness. You who are tired, find rest. You who are weak, find strength. You who are thirsty, come to the well and drink. He will freely feed all of them who are weak. He will quench the righteous thirst of all who humbly seek. You who are thirsty, come to the well and drink from waters flowing. You who are hungry, come to the bread and eat of his holiness. You who are tired, find rest. You who are weak, find strength. You who are thirsty, come to the well and Thank you, Jody. That was beautiful music for this morning for us to listen to. Good morning. My name is Donna Rodriguez, and I'm here to present to you our daily bless- Unity's Daily Blessings. The word for today is protected. I shine, and the, the affirmation for today is I shine my light and feel protected. Feelings of fear that creep into our lives may conjure childhood memories of scary nighttime images and noises. As children, we may have felt afraid of the dark or startled by an unfamiliar sound, but the morning sun always dispelled the darkness, and we realized there was never anything to fear. We keep that knowledge alive as we let the divine presence within dissolve the darkness of fear and shine the light of comfort and safety. Now, when any darkness descends in our lives, we remember the protecting love, presence, and power of God 
expressing as us. As we attune more fully to our divine nature, light dawns within our consciousness, and we realize that God's protection is always ours. And this, the words from uh, Psalms this morning, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And now to present your meditation for today is Reverend Vi. You're in for a treat. This is that special time in our service for our meditation where we make that conscious connection with God. So I invite you now to get comfortable. Maybe take a deep breath and let it out. Find a point in the room to focus your attention. And think about that breath, that wonderful breath of life, as it flows in our bodies, blessing our body as we breathe out. We are part of the universal cycle of life. And as this cycle of life, we know that we are the light of the world. Wherever we go, we are the light of the world. And so I invite you to watch a pinpoint of white light right behind your heart. You may not see it, so just know that it's there. And watch it now as it grows and it glows and it grows and it glows. It fills your entire body, bringing, bringing peace and health and love and every good thing. And now it grows and glows until it's all around your body. And it just beams out into the world, bringing light and life and wisdom. And so we take just a moment to sit in the light and watch it and allow it to bless us. It's time now to bring our attention back to this room and this time and this place, but our light keeps glowing. It goes with us this day, guiding and blessing our way and blessing everything that we come in contact with. With this light, we are strengthened and blessed. And we say thank you, God, and amen. Will you join me in prayer? We thank you, God, for your presence that is here with us. We thank you for your truth in that in this moment in time that we open ourselves to receive truth in all the ways that you present it to us. And that the words of this message may come with truth and that each of us are blessed through your spirit. Amen. And so the story goes that a hen lays a shockingly huge egg, and the news reporters visit the hen for an interview. This is amazing, they tell the hen. A two-pound egg. That's unheard of. Do you have any goals for the future? And the hen says proudly, well, yes, 
I'm aiming for a four-pounder. Are you? Wow. And you, sir, congratulations, the re reporters approach the rooster. What are your goals for the future? And the re rooster replies darkly, to get rid of that darn ostrich. Someone commented recently to me that as a minister, I sometimes take a different approach to truth than other ministers that they were accustomed to. And I'm not sure if they meant it as a compliment, but I took it as one. After all, it isn't so much what other people say, but the meaning you assign to their thoughts and, mat and that matters. And like you, I love truth. I love God and the justice that flows through spiritual law. Spiritual law does not discern personality of the being that it's utilizing. It does not judge if it likes or even favors the person. It simply responds to the thoughts and the actions, the energy that we emit. And because we are imaginative creations of our source, we may find truth everywhere, perhaps even in the most unlikely situations. Which makes sense, doesn't it? Since our human experience is the classroom for our soul. Everything is available to teach us and assist us to grow. Well, today I'm sharing a story that I heard on a Bette Midler album. And yes, Miss M is one of my favorite performers. And I also enjoy her outrageous body humor. And this story originally is a body one. And should you hear it on the album, you will recognize it, that I edited it substantially for a talk on truth to a wider audience. So while the tale is fiction, there is truth that runs underneath. And Bette begins the story like this. <clears throat> and you may even already know the story. I was walking down 42nd Street one day, and an amazing thing happened. It was July, 89 degrees, hot, hot for New York. And I was, as I was heading east, there was a large person heading west. And she was wearing a big blue dress with little white daisies. And she was almost bald, except she was wearing a fried egg sitting right here on her forehead. And Bette said, I thought it was odd because the lady with, with fried eggs on their heads don't usually come out until September or October. But there she was. And as I looked at her, I thought, oh God, don't let me wake up some morning and want to put a fried egg on my head. And then I thought, if I do happen to wake up and find a fried egg on my forehead, don't let anyone notice. Because if they do notice, let them not say anything. Because in life, everyone has a fried egg. Some people wear them on the outside, and some people wear them on the inside. Now in unity, we often state that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And in this, we differentiate between our external spiritual ex existence and our temporal human experience. It's challenging sometimes to focus on the spiritual, which begins primarily as an inner experience, when our outside human experience appears so alive, and we, we experience it through our senses. So it's right in our face. Yet we grow in our connection with spirit through our practices of prayer, worship, study, and service. And each day, we take time to commune with God in our own way. Each day we affirm God's good working through us. These are self-care lessons we discussed last week. We learn through Jesus who would leave the energy of the crowd to rejuvenate himself in isolation through spirit. And people flocked to Jesus because he was a master. He understood a new and different relationship with our source, God, the Christ is God expressed as man. He was and is that Christ. He was radical and offered a brand of love and compassion and rebellion that was attractive to those seeking a new way of living. 
The people were looking for an alternative way from life as a continual challenge. Perhaps they were looking for a way to let go of the fried egg that was attached to them. Now, last week I talked about the crowds that formed around Jesus, people seeking healing, individuals needing recognition. And sometimes that's what it comes to, people needing to be recognized. They need to be heard and counted. But there was one who didn't consciously come to him, but he went to her. And I'm referring to the Samaritan woman at the well. The story from the scripture goes from the fourth, from the book of John, the fourth chapter, that a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone to the city to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, would ask a drink of me, a woman from Samaria? Because Jews don't really share things in common with the Samaritans. And the Samaritans in the story signify the mixed thoughts. The revealing word tells us that they're partly worldly and partly religious, that they were a mixture of Assyrian and Hebrew. And they claimed to be direct descendants of of Abraham and taught the book of Moses, but they were not recognized by the Jews. And they were not um, followers of the Jewish tradition, of the Mosaic code and law. And metaphysically, Samaria represents a mixture of consciousness in which truth and error are mixed. You know, I think we all have had that experience in our lives where we're mixed with both truth and error sometimes, and we're working our way through it. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would give you living water, which is divinely inspired life. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you think you're going to get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? So we see in this conversation already that Jesus is on one level, and the woman is on another level. We've had those conversations too, haven't we? And Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Everyone who drinks of the the water from this well is going to be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. So Jesus on this higher level and the woman is attracted to this higher level, as many of us are when we first hear about truth. But in the moment, it's still an intellectual attraction. And sometimes that's how we are. We are stimulated by the possibility, and we go into this intellectual attraction to it. But it isn't yet centered in our hearts, is it? Because we got to do a lot of work for that to happen. And Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come back. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you're right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. And you got to think what the woman was thinking. How did he know that? But the woman said to him in her own way, saying that, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors, ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say the place where the people must worship is in Jerusalem which means the habitation of peace, the place of peace. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship 
what we know for salvation is from the Jews. And he's essentially telling her, you are not connected to what you worship. You are disconnected. It's an empty gesture. Jesus offers a direct connection with God, God the good omnipotence. But the hour is coming and is here now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship with him, to worship with heart and head. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. He's telling her there's no separation from God. The manifestations of truth is available to all who seek. And the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will proclaim all these, all these things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Now spiritually, Jesus saw the woman as an individual soul who was searching for salvation. Her personal life was less than stellar. She may have felt lost, unimportant, even burdened. But Jesus understood the human aspects, that error consciousness, yet offered her the gift of moving beyond the physical into a deeper understanding of life through spirit, from a, a life of challenge into drinking of the living water that would provide eternal nurturance, the inspiration of spirit. He invited her to see, live, and know life differently, to be connected to God, our source. Now, some of us have what is known as a come-to-Jesus moment. It's a moment of reckoning, just like the woman at the well, we come to a moment when we understand our brokenness of being human and begin to accept our healing through the power of our source, God the good. And as true students, we grow away from error thinking. And in our prayers, we affirm spiritual understanding and the ability to see others rightly. We affirm our thoughts onto loving others, growing in compassion, and to live with Christ's mind in action. Yet error thinking pops up from time to time, doesn't it? It's often disguised as fear, and most of the time we fear change. We fear that things will change, or we fear things will not change. But change it will. Can't avoid it. It's our reckoning that we release the old, tired ways of thinking and acting, and we turn to God the good. We turn to God in all of God's love and all the knowledge that God is everywhere present and would have its creation. God would have us to think and respond in love and in light. Now, this brings me back to the story about the woman wearing the fried egg. Now, Bet recounts the story as a prelude to the song, Hello in There. It's a ballad that serves as a reminder that sometimes people get lost from our notice of them. We get involved with our life. Things change, and sometimes people's lives get smaller. Sometimes they have mobility issues or financial insecurity, or life has simply dramatically changed for them. And sometimes people are alone. And being alone or in solitude is not a bad thing. But being lonely can be unhealthy. And Beth's story before the song illustrates separation. Sometimes life goes wonky on us, and we end up wearing a fried egg on our forehead. It happens. But hopefully, there's someone there to help us out. Now, Jesus sought out the Samaritan woman to help her with the fried egg that she wore on the inside. And it reminds us to extend that same compassion and hope as well, that we are here to help others along the way. Now, help can take form in many ways. 
It can happen through a connection, through the phone or an email or a letter. Help could happen as we reach out to assist others with tasks that they find challenging. Help and reaching out could, can, help it, can happen through listening, allowing someone to share their story and to listen. Don't solve anything, just listen. And it can happen through prayer, that we are affirming God's presence and good in others' lives, that we hold the visualization of them happy, healthy, and wealthy. And there are many ways that we can serve others, and we're charged to do that. That is what we are here for in this lifetime. Our fifth principle, spiritual principle, states, knowing our spiritual principles is not enough. We must love and share them. In other words, we must demonstrate them. And demonstrating takes it out of the mental context, out of the mental realm, and brings it into the heart. Jesus, Jesus was the master of demonstrating compassion and seeing others rightly, affirming their healing, affirming their wholeness. Sharing truth is as easy as reminding each other of God's everywhere present, especially in our lives. And in this time of physical distancing, let's take, take some action to, to share our truth, to reach out through writing or calling someone who may be isolated, to pray affirmatively that God is manifesting God's self through their lives in whole and gentle ways. Visualize them all, safe and happy. Remember that we are called here to love our neighbors as ourselves and that we extend the same love, compassion, and grace to ourselves. And should it be us that is isolated, we are to reach out to someone, affirming God's presence in theirs and in our lives. In closing, I'd like to, to remind you that if you happen to see someone walking down the street with a fried egg on their forehead, remember not to say anything, but instead know that you are a vehicle to truth and possibly to their truth. You are a truth student. You are the light of the world. And you know that the fried egg is merely a human condition and that you offer compassion and truth that may assist them in the changes needed to release their error thinking and accept God's loving truth. And as my dear Reverend Vi would say, and that's the truth. Amen. Except for the Lord, the Lord. And let all who seek, 
let them come to the water. And let all who have nothing, let them come to the Lord without money, without strife. Why should you spend your life except for the Lord, the Lord? And let all who toil, let them come to the water. And let all who are weary, let them come to the Lord. All who labor, who labor without rest, how can your soul find rest except for the Lord? Thank you, Jody. It was so beautiful, beautiful. I'd also like to thank Reverend Vi for being here and leading this in a wonderful meditation and for Donna for being here for the Daily Word, as well as the people behind the scenes, uh, Patricia, who uh, 
make sure that we have clean microphones and gets us all organized. And Judy, who organizes even larger with the PowerPoint and uh, scheduling. And then Phil and Becky, who go and do all the work in editing and posting what you see today. We are so grateful to them. Unity believes and supports in prayer. We believe prayer is a vital function of our spiritual life. And we invite you to contact our church office when you have a prayer need, and we can get you in contact then with uh, one of our chaplains. Or we invite you to um, call Silent Unity, and they are open 365 days of the year. They are there to help and support you. We want to thank you for your continued prayer and financial support. And we thank you for the checks that come to us through the mail. To also remind you that we, on our website, we have a donate button. You just press that and uh, it is safe, secure, and it's very easy. And um, also we can take your credit card information over the phone. Your financial gifts to us are important. We need you. And so we are grateful to you for responding. And also we wanna remain connected to you through our newsletter. And um, if, but we need your email address. So if you could call our church office and let us know what that is, we wanna make sure that you have the daily news, the weekly newsletter and the daily blessings that come out. And also a reminder that every Sunday we have a Zoom meeting at 10 a.m. It's a time of prayer, connection, message, and conversation. We are so glad that we've had this chance to gather together, and now we're going to sing the peace song and follow that up with the prayer for protection. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. begin with me let this be the moment now with every step I take let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Will you join me for the prayer for protection? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. We miss you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us, and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook. Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.